Hello and welcome to this edition of Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. Thank you for joining us. Well, we have a new guest today, uh, new to our ministry. Chris Emery is with us. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? I am fine. I've enjoyed the little time I've had to get to know you. And you've had a career in film and radio and television and before that even as a model. And then I think you said you did some freelance sports photography. That's correct. So you've kind of always been around a camera, haven't you? I was raised ever since I was four. Uh, Dad uh, showed us how to work the, the, uh, the Brownie camera. And it was back before audio was even on the movie camera. So kind of dating myself here, but yeah. Well, I'd love to chase off on sports on the NCAA and NFL, but um, that's not the purpose of our program. Yeah. <laughs> so we will go ahead and talk about why you're with us today. You, uh, you released an explosive, and it was your first produced, I believe, video that just uh, was award-winning and, and captured a lot of media attention called mm-hmm. A Noble Lie. And we're going to be doing three shows with Chris, so we'll get to that one. And that was about the Oklahoma City bombing and a possible cover-up. That's we'll correct. We'll do a show on that. But today, you followed that up with one called State of Mind because it it actually uh, had begun to bother you that there were conflicting stories and reports, I believe, about the 93 World Trade Center bombing Mm and And uh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City in 95 and just really a whole string of things that you felt that perhaps our government was, shall I say, less than forthright. Yes, uh, this film was actually inspired by the first one that we put out in Ovalai, Oklahoma City, 1995, which we'll get into in another segment. And we were getting feedback from um, our customers from all over the world, St. Petersburg, Russia, um, Auckland, New Zealand, Sydney, Australia, um, all over Canada, the United States and Mexico. And they were asking us, why wasn't there more critical thinking applied to what happened in Oklahoma City? Why weren't people asking questions, you know, before we came out with this film more on a critical basis? So we uh, took it upon ourselves to research um, 23 experts on how we're literally controlled from the day we're born till the day we die. And out of the 23, we're able to interview uh, 18. Now we weren't able to include all 18 of those in the film, but at least they came forward and offered their expertise. And uh, these are award-winning uh, authors, uh, tenured and you know, uh, peer-reviewed authors. So they're experts on the case. Hence, uh, the, the film was a culmination of that work. Interesting. I wanted to sort of couch our discussion in a scripture passage, if I may, and then we'll take it from there. Those of you that know the Lord and uh, his word, you know that we are not to be conformed to this world, squeezed into its mold, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that's because our world is a place of deceit and deception planted there by Satan and his spirits, but also because lost people fall right into that lie and believe it and carry it forward. So... First John 4 gives this warning to God's people. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. And I like that word test, as you're saying, critical thinking. And we also have spiritual tests. But try the spirits, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Mm-hmm. So let me just sort of let that be our segue into some of the things you begin to discover. You made the statement a moment ago that from birth mm-hmm. on we are actually being consciously manipulated. That's correct. All the way from uh, being assigned a, uh, you know, the birth certificate, social security number, vaccines. Um, here we are coming into the world completely fresh. Uh, the neurons in our brain have not been tested yet. When you're stimulated, whether it be music or medicine or uh, the tactile touch of the mother or you know, the parents, your brain um, starts formulating the way that it should be thinking. How, what's your comfort zones? What are your alert zones? Uh, what, what does your body need to recognize as far as emergencies or just being relaxed? And so if you're brought up in a very loving and nurturing environment, there's a good chance, barring any uh, genetic uh, deformities, that you're going to you know, pass that on to your children. There are um, a, a wide variety of, of situations, um, socioeconomic um, you know, the environment, the country, the culture, whatever. What we tried to do was, was focus basically on the more pragmatic. We mm-hmm. didn't really get into the cultural differences. And like I said, we interviewed these experts. The movie lays it out in a very academic approach. Nothing conspiratorial, nothing political. And that's one thing that we really were recognized in all three of our programs, or all three of our projects, was that we didn't take a political stripe on any of this. We go right down the middle of the road, present the facts, and have the viewer decide. Right. And you don't, as you said, take a partisan approach or anything like that. But uh, 
you know, I've viewed this uh, documentary, State of Mind, and it's quite fascinating. And Thank we you. have out of their own mouths or writings, mm -hmm. uh, their ideas and plans. And I know you cite some of that. I'm thinking of uh, George Orwell, 1984, the Fabian Society um, that would have included H.G. Wells and the right. other things that they actually told about what they wanted to do. Well, the classic case, H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. They didn't expect it to go anywhere near the, you know, the blow up and the chaos and the mayhem that it created. It was supposed to be a, a radio show that may have gotten some response. I mean, it obviously, you know, the, the roof came down on that one. It was amazing. People, there were several, unfortunately, folks that had taken their own lives because they believed it was real. This was the Orson Welles broadcast. That's correct. On yeah. Halloween yeah. evening. In That's right. I don't remember the year, but it was in the early part of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And we cite that in the film. But uh, what we try to do in our films is basically we start with a building block. We give the foundation of the information, and then we extrapolate and give examples. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about uh, the MK Ultra program later mm -hmm. in the interview. Well, I think you started uh, mm -hmm. back with Plato's Republic mm -hmm. and the famous cave allegory where people are sitting in shadows their whole life, maybe a fire behind them, but shadows on the wall and a dim light. Correct. And if they're let out into the sunlight, they're just blinded by the light. Yeah. They think that the shadows are reality. Right. But it's just a contrived, a created reality. Mm -hmm. so. It's, uh, it, it was interesting doing the, the back research and, and talking to the authors of the different books um, and the subjects that we included on the film. And we made, wanted to make sure that not only were they professional, but we, um, we vetted out the information and, you know, through other sources. We always triple check the facts. So like I said, nothing is conspiratorial on this film, not on any of our films. So um, we encourage the, the viewers, um, your viewers, to, to purchase the film at least get a, a basic understanding, especially for, here I am sounding like my dad, well, I'll do respect to dad, but <laughs> it's, it's the, the children. I mean, we're talking about the generation today that are completely overrun with, whether it be good or bad, um, you know, electronic uh, information, just exactly. stuff that's instantaneous. You have to step back and say, okay, not only do we have this information, how are you going to assimilate that? And then what type of reaction are you going to do you know in correlation to that information whether it be emergencies such as some of the uh, alleged terrorist attacks or something as simple as how are you going to respect one another we cover that in the film that's and good yeah. yes well it's so important and you know coming on through some of history i know you cited uh machiavelli's work the prince oh which phenomenal. you know that's yeah that and and i understand that wasn't meant to go public but it did mm -hmm. later and of course it's been used by many people i think uh Hitler and Stalin kept a copy of it by their bedside and read it daily, I'm told. Yes. But that brings up the question, would, would the government deceive its citizens? Well, obviously a bad government, but not, not us, not here, not in our town, not in our country. No, we have George Washington, I would never tell a lie, right. and Abraham on a stave. And so we've built this, if you will, mythos of uh, just all of our politicians are truthful and honest and uh, comment on that if you would we were fortunate to meet some honest politicians and i'm not saying that in jest um one that will cite in the interview with the uh, the oklahoma city bombing in fact i'm going to have breakfast with him tomorrow morning um but uh yes it, there's it's the good and the bad there's the balance mm -hmm. you mentioned that yeah it's the yang and the ying as the japanese would uh would, would say and um in fact, we uh, I cited a story that General Parton had said, in, you know, driving by the Pentagon, he says, for every light that's on there at night, there's somebody trying to take down this country, somebody trying to save it. So that's what we try to do with our films is strike a balance. Okay, yes, there is the good and there is the bad, but what decisions are you going to make with this information? You know, you, you have to be responsible, uh, take a more pragmatic, a more mature, mature approach to it, and hopefully our films are going to help you do that. Well, I think what you point out is, uh, you know, we're taught from infancy, and we do honor our parents. There's a biblical principle there, but we're taught from infancy uh, just to accept what we're told and to mm -hmm. be compliant with, you know, anybody in an authority position, never question anything. Sure. And so we don't learn to critically think. And that was, you know, I'm just thinking about that uh, kindergarten, of course. Um, it was from the, the German, uh, much to the credit, their education system was good, but there were some flaws in it. The kindergarten system we have here in the United States was brought over from the early 1900s from Europe. 
um, and there were some things that need to be improved. Most recently, the uh, the Common Core, mm -hmm. huge uproar on that, and that is something. In fact, uh, uh, we'll jump ahead here on this uh, state of mind psychology of control. We interview uh, Dr. Uh, Charlotte Isabeet. She wrote white papers for the Reagan administration mm -hmm. in the Department of, of Education. She was the expert's expert on, okay, if we're going to implement this particular uh, set of rules or uh, this particular uh, way of operating in our education system, whether it be on a local or a county or a federal level, what are the ramifications? What are the consequences? And she said that Common Core, straight out of her mouth, was actually a Chinese communist education system from the late 1940s. It's just given a new name, mm -hmm. um, kind of polished up, you know, new names, new faces, new board of directors. She said it's the same thing. I had a conversation with her after she got to, to watch the film about a month after it came out. She finally had the time in between her travels and writing. And uh, she lit up like a Christmas tree for 45 minutes on the phone. And My I said, Dr. Isabeet, so what's going on? And that's when she laid out the foundation of what Common Core is. She knew this was going to come down the pipe, even back when she was with the Reagan administration. And she was furious. She says, whatever happens, please, we've got to make sure this thing gets put away. Do not let it see the light of day or else it'll be the downfall of our country. Because you're taking younger generations. They're going to be our future leaders. Well, if they don't know any difference between good and bad, we're going to come up with bad. I mean, that it's, you know, it's a consequence. I think many of our college students today who are fresh into college are already in that category. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can think critically or know the difference. They just believe. Not even agree with you. what yeah. they are told to think. They believe what they be their feelings are more real to them than anything. Mm -hmm. What you'll find out in, in this film and um, the production value is took. We did real good on the first one. A state of mind psychology control took a, a quantum leap as far mm -hmm. as the quality and um, the the graphics, uh, the way we present the information, very easy to assimilate. And it's it's easy enough to you could sit uh, your your five or six year old down and it's. We're not talking down to them, but we presented both on a, on a basic level, but also on a very mature and adult level. So the whole family can watch these films and understand there's a good takeaway from a lot of it. Well, that is good. And uh, I'm going to ask you um, maybe to comment on the phrase, the collective, um, oh, wow. and how that is a part of all of this manipulation of the public. It's my take on the collective is, you know, you're encouraged to be part of the group and there's no independent thinking no individuality exactly and you have to maintain the individuality um because that's where your creative juices come from that's, that's the engine yeah. of creativity yes. sure it is and if you you stifle that you quash that you throw water on that fire um you're only going to go in one direction and that's the direction of the folks that are, are the, the leading you whether it be in a good or a bad direction and you won't have the ability to decipher or to um you decide, okay, what, what, where are we going here? Are they walking us off the edge of the cliff? Or are they taking us in a different direction that's going to be actually better for the, the, uh, us as a whole? And um, critical thinking is the most important thing that we need to instill in our kids today. And like you said, unfortunately, it's not anywhere near where it should be. And if I may cite a biblical example, I, I think instantly as you were talking of Daniel 3, which is where the giant statue Nebuchadnezzar erects on the plain of Shinar. Right. And the gold statue, and at the sound of the music, everyone is to bow and fall forward. And as you already know the story, and most of you will know of the story, the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and those are the Babylonian names, which was an attempt to brainwash them, but they, they stood up. Mm -hmm. They refused to bow and bow with the collective. And when you stand up for truth, mm -hmm. you stand out. And sometimes that rallies others, and sometimes it takes you to the fiery furnace. Yes. You just have to be prepared either way, but what is important is to stand up for the truth. We really had a lot of good feedback from our uh, viewers. Uh, like I said, emails. I was getting phone calls at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes from people uh, you know, from Australia and uh, Canada. And they said, we really liked your work. Um, we, the academic community on our second, they, the first film they came on board, the second one we even had a wider base. And that's where we really found our niche and knew that we were heading in the right direction with the quality of our work. Mm -hmm. And um, we're talking both conservative as well as liberal universities, the history and the journalism and the, the media department said, you guys are doing this, this good, uh, please keep it up. And we took it as a vote of confidence. We didn't let it go to our heads. 
because you're only as good as your latest project. You can't sit on your thumbs. You don't sit on your laurels. Five or ten days, yes, but yeah, that's it. Then you, you've got to look ahead and say, okay, well, how can we improve on our work? And that's what we've done with our films. But State of Mind Psychology Control is really where we burnished ourselves into the academic community. And I think that's, uh, like I said, we, we were in stride and we found our groove on that. Well, let me just tell our viewers about this product. Mm -hmm. This is, again, um, we're with Chris Emery today. He's the producer. Uh, this is State of Mind. It's an over two hour long documentary on the psychology of control, really media manipulation and not just the media, but many other avenues in our society. We're offering this to our viewers for 1995 plus shipping and handling. But he's also produced two other videos. We're doing a program on each one. Shadow Ring, which is really about the, um, the globalist enterprise for one world government. And the first one, A Noble Lie, which was about the Oklahoma City bombing. You can get all three of those in a bundle uh, for $49.95 plus shipping and handling. And as always, what you'd want to do is call the 800 number on your screen or go to the website, uh, prophecyinthenews.com, and get into our bookstore there, and we'll be glad to help fill your order. Listen, we've got about, uh, oh, a little over 11 minutes. L let me chase two threads with you one at a time. Okay. L let's think about uh, the psychology of advertising mm -hmm. in our nation, and then let's think about... Um, the CIA and what uh, they may have done with some techniques. Okay. So we have time to do those uh, in a brief way and at least whet the appetite. Well, uh, advertising. Um, I used to work for, uh, I was a professional model and actor, so I got to see 18 years in front of the camera, 18 years behind. So that's apropos. Uh, anything all the way from uh, subtle colors to uh, there may be some um, you know, underlying um, sexual undertones or whatever. But it subliminal message exactly, too. exactly subliminal. Whether it be uh, you know basically stimulating the the sight, Even the, the flicker mind of the television, exactly. Yeah, as is that well a rate to sort of put you in a in a kind of trance-like state, isn't yeah, it? Especially with cable television and the internet now, there's more. It's easier to control on the computer, on the flat screen. Television, um, yes, but more so even on the computers. Whether you get your uh, handheld devices, your laptops, your your uh, Kindles, whatever the case may be. Why people get on there and stay for hours. Exactly. And especially with the, the video games and so forth. Uh, boy, we, we interviewed uh, a couple of vets that uh, they were taught before they went into combat. There were special uh, videos that were uh, produced by contractors from the CIA in Washington, Langley, Virginia, to get these soldiers in a particular mindset. So when they're out on the battlefield or when they're doing the drones, the shoot down, that the subconscious, the guilt segment of your subconscious was pretty much put in neutral. There was a justification for taking a human life or destroying a building that um, you or I was like, not only know, but there's no way I would even conceive this. So mm -hmm. anyway, subliminal uh, training. Um, I mean, there, there's all kinds of stimulants, whether it be this, the size of the product, whether it be trucks or uh, the size of uh, you know, a motorcycle. Um, uh, the colors, the uh, good-looking women or good-looking couples, you know, it's just a wide variety. We cover that. We basically take it in, in steps and say, okay, if this is the way, Dr. Eldon Taylor, by the way, is an expert on that. He's worked with uh, the Bureau of Prisons for years to see how prisoners are stimulated or why mm -hmm. they committed certain crimes. So, um, you know, that's one avenue that we develop on. And although we, we don't have time to chase it long, the whole idea of the framing of language, social engineering through mm -hmm. linguistic programming. Exactly. The way you say, th in other words, if I say, mm -hmm. instead of saying uh, you're pro-life, mm -hmm. that you love babies even before birth, if I call you anti-choice, which is kind of how the media chooses to cast sure. that, it makes you look like a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's all the way in it. It's the language itself, I mean, here again, it's common manipulation. core. It's manipulation. Yeah, common core, getting back to that. It's uh, how are you going to solve a math problem? Well, you can do it simple or you can go complex. Why, why do complex? Because it confuses the basic understanding of how the intuitive and the process of, of getting things done in a more efficient way. Mm -hmm. And that with the, the language control, it's the same thing. Get them off, uh, tear it off into a different direction that simply doesn't make any sense. And they'll think that that's normal. Right. Especially as a three or four year old. Those neurons are getting developed in the brain. We take the development of, of your brain, of, like I said, from day one in your body and break it down and say, okay, how has this been known over history? Uh, Napoleon, Machiavelli, 
you know, how, how did they come to power? And, um, you know, the kings, the king makers, the king breakers, the, who, who were, uh, brought these people into ascent as the popes and the queens and the kings over the years. The, the power behind the throne. Absolutely. Behind the curtain. Now we're back to shadow ring and yeah. we'll get to that. But yeah. Let's talk about our, uh, our central intelligence agency uh, and how they've made use of some of these studies and even a connection with Nazi scientists. Wow. Um, okay, Operation Paperclip, um, back right after uh, World War II. Now let me just stop. This yeah. is not conspiracy theory. No, this is based this on facts. This is fact. factual, historical, verifiable information. That's correct. And that's, that's one thing I said. We go to great pains to make sure that's on our film. So all of this is, is source related. You can go find the credible sources, triple check their facts. Shortly um, before World War II, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the armistice uh, was agreed uh, between the Germans and the uh, Allied forces. A lot of the top German scientists and the officers knew that the end was near. Mm -hmm. Some negotiated their way, um, whether it be through wealth or diamonds or whatever. Some were actually uh, taken by the Allied forces. They were kidnapped and brought, the Epscon had brought to the United States or South America before the war was even over. And they would have been tried for war crimes otherwise. Absolutely, they would have uh, met the wrong end of the news after Nuremberg. But these, they were the brilliant, they were the best of the best. So the Britons, the British, uh, the US, um, and even the Russians were after them. So there was that, that competition before the war was even over, up to about nine months. And you say after them, you mean to acquire them. Absolutely, yeah, physically. And their, and their knowledge. Their knowledge, and of course, uh, Goddard, one of the top NASA scientists, he was a German Robert engineer. Trump. That's right, but anyway, Operation Paperclip, that was uh, a whole different, uh, angle and the the war department uh the cia wasn't started back then uh, as the cia it was there was a, a department within the war department that was doing uh, clandestine affairs and they knew that the germans were some of the top and that they had a lot of respect for them so they brought them to washington they would have homes in vermont or you know uh, uh, idaho or new hampshire completely out of the middle of nowhere but they they developed what these people were both men and women were experts at and that was the uh, the Dulles brothers. It was the the genesis of the beginning of the CIA. And of course, it is it is so deep and is so far down the rabbit hole now. We were only able to scratch on a few of of the programs that they they work on, including MK Ultra. And that's what's developed on our film. Um, ironically, we and we'll go into this in the uh, Noble Eye. We did have a former CIA agent help us out with that film. So I, I had a lot of respect for what he he chose to do for us and where he'd been. Well, this was serious stuff. What uh, what would you feel free to say about MK Ultra uh, for just a few minutes? It and uh, let me just point something out real quick. You used the term War Department. Mm -hmm. Good for you. That's what it used to be called. That's correct. Talking about language manipulation. Today, mm -hmm. it's called Department, of, Department Defense. of Defense. Good point. Now think about the difference. We once called it the War Department. Now we call it the Department of Defense. I'll leave that for our audience to chew on. MK Ultra. Uh, the we we say Dr. Jolin West, both uh, he had his fingers in the Oklahoma City bombing as far as trying to work with McVeigh on, on the mind control. We go into further on what he did. Um, in fact, he was here at the University of Oklahoma in Norman for several years. He was fired uh, for killing an elephant because he injected with too much LSD. I mm. mean, um, it was just it, it's like, wow, what was he thinking? Ended up moving on to UCLA. His son uh, up to about four years ago, I know that he lived here. Dr. Jolin West was the, it all depends on how you look at it. He was the best of the best for the CIA or for a civilian, he was the worst of the worst. He was the Prince of Darkness. Mm. He shows up in your town, it's time to pack your bags and leave because there's no good reason for him to be there as far as you and I as civilians off the mm -hmm. street. He was working for the government. Mind control uh, studied uh, uh, death and dread in, in both the Bureau of Prisons, the local and the state and the federal level saw how uh, your mind was, uh, if you were in confinement, under uh, different drugs, uh, diets, and so forth. And then he worked with um, uh, his, his actual, uh, he was an understudy to an expert out of Montreal, and we go into that in the film. That's where MK Ultra was actually conceived. The CIA was working with the Canadian counterpart to the CIA in that, and um, it's horrible. It, it was just absolutely horrific what they did. Uh, we s still think it's in place under a different name, why wouldn't it be? I mean, it was working so well for them in the 60s and 70s. There's no reason they're going to yank the funding. So it's, it's under a different name. There's a very uh, unaccountable budget That's from right. of our Department of Defense. Exactly. 
Well, it's, you know, without going into all the details, which y your documentary does, there was an uh, instance of people, probably against their will and consent, mm -hmm. being used and experimented on, uh, much in, in at least the mindset that the Germans approach their, their victims. That's correct. Doug Valentine, we interview him. In fact, he's in the opening uh, segments. His dad wrote white papers for the CIA and uh, did, he was uh, intimately involved with the MK Ultra project. Uh, but his dad dealt with what was going on behind the scenes right before the Vietnam War started. There was so much infighting and so much um, setting up of South Vietnamese leaders allegedly being killed by the North Vietnamese. Well, it was the CIA that was killing them. Mm. They had to foment this reason to start the war. Leaders of, of uh, allied countries getting killed, being blamed on uh, you know, leaders of, of the countries that we were trying to defeat all at the, the hand of, of the U.S. military and the U.S. CIA. And we'll really get into that in the next program on Shadow Ring. That's correct. About the wars and some of the reasons stated for mm -hmm. going to war. Well, these are some uh, sinister things. And as we kind of bring this to a close, Chris Emery, thank you for being with us. It's always uh, a pleasure. Thank you. You know, we want to keep the bright side, the hopeful, positive side the Lord gives us. The return of the Lord is the blessed hope. And all the kingdoms of this world are going to come to an end when Christ returns. And what you need to do to be ready for when he returns is to know what he did the first time he came. And the first time he came, he came as a lamb. He was offered on the cross as a sacrifice for your sins and mine. His body was broken. His blood was shed. He gave his life so that you and I could be forgiven. And to those who may not know him, the Bible says if you will believe in your heart that Christ rose from the dead and with your lips confess that he is your Lord, that is surrender your life to him, not just in lip service, but in true surrender. The Bible says you'll be saved. You'll be forgiven. You'll become a child of the Lord. We want to encourage you to do that because it makes all the difference in the world. And for all the Herods and Pharaohs and Nebuchadnezzars and Caesars and the wicked men that have come across the scene, the Lord Jesus will be the perfect king and he will rule and reign in righteousness. And I don't know about you, but I really look forward to that day. I do. That will be an incredible and wonderful time. And so we want to thank you for being with us. We want to welcome our new channels that, that have, we've recently been added to in our audience in Toledo and Atlanta. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. We invite you to check our Facebook page, Prophecy in the News. Check our website. We archive all of our shows there. And we want to just encourage you to get as acquainted with us as you can. We have daily news updates there as well. And we want to thank you. Till then, let's keep looking 